finally an opportunity to continue the project today so I don't know what I'm gonna get done but my goal today is to disassemble as much as I can on this uh, body and frame in hopes that I can take the motor out uh, do some test and then uh, prep it for gasket changes and things like that and then prep the transmission for rebuild but that seems like maybe days away from now so we'll see what I can get done today but uh, I just want to share this with you obviously progress any type of progress is good and I'm glad that I'm back on it so let's go <laughs> before I start start though I want to introduce not so cheap build that's what i'm going to call the episodes of this build until it's done i'm going to try to be as uh, frugal as possible reuse things rebuild things things like that but i know it's not going to be not so cheap right that's why it's not so cheap build so introduction of nscp actually episode one of this i talked a little bit about that but i figure maybe we'll just get a term out of it uh, and then uh, we'll see where that goes. So, not so cheap build. Okay. I'm trying. I think the brakes are stuck. <laughs> I have to pull it with the Jeep. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, uh. Okay. Is it in gear? Go! I mean, in gear, you know. That's a problem. Hey, a boy, a bear. I get him. I'm down. I'm down. I'm down. I'm down. Okay, that's good. Thank you. <laughs> Turn off now. All right, well. We moved it under the tent and then took off the hood. First order of business is just to take whatever off, I guess, right? But I'm trying to go in order here, so. And then, of course, I'm gonna try to save as much as I can, but let me just kinda go over first couple of things I'm gonna do. Of course, there's no manual in taking apart an old car. <laughs> uh, I think what needs to happen first is, for me anyways, I'm trying to just get things out of the way so I can get to where I need to go. Uh, but the, this steering column needs to come off. And for me to get make it easier, I'll just remove this brake booster, the, the mounting, everything. Remove that as safe as possible so I don't break anything. Looks like the brake lines are still in good shape. And then after that, then I can take off the front cowl, maybe cut up some of this and then be able to lift off the body from there. So, we will see. See, now I can get to easily. All right, taking off the steering box, all of this stuff I can use, definitely. Uh, making a mess down there, of course part of working on cars but this is a uh, pretty badass box guys never had any issues with uh, Ford old Ford boxes I think this is maybe like they're sucking our box but I'm not quite sure uh, the, the power steering unit um, I've had issues with the stock ones uh, but not with big tires this up to 33s is pretty good so I'll keep those uh, anyways, taking this off so that I can take off the steering column and then moving on to the next one.
power steering. This is a big deal. Back in the 60s and the 70s. We just take it for granted now. But it's off and it's heavy. There we go. Yeah, a couple of things real quick. You know what I notice is if I'm working on like uh, Jeeps or the newer Chevys, uh, they try to stick to the same size bolt all throughout in, in an area so you don't have to change so many damn sockets. But these old cars you go from 13, 15, 16, 14 in one area and it's, you know, kind of unique, right? But also make sure you tag, put, put, put your bolts, parts in bags and tag it so you don't get lost. Just all right, I was able to take out the steering column with no drama. Well, there's drama because I broke one of the pins on the steering column wiring. So, I don't know. I'll keep on going and just trying to be gentle as possible. But if I just destroy the wiring harness, then it's going to get a brand new wiring harness. Okay. okay. All right. The dash is off, but I had to cut the fans because I'm not going to use any fans for this one. It's going to be a roadster, but I try to keep as much as the wiring intact so that I can identify what wire goes to what when I rewire it. But the most important thing about the dash is that the glove box compartment has numbers. And most of the time is the VIN number for the vehicle is on the glove box as well. One of the areas in it, so. Okay. All right, guys. I'm gonna take off the wiring harness from the vehicle. Uh, I try to keep it together as much as possible because I need to use it as a base when I rewire the vehicle, but uh, a lot of these I'm not going to use, and like I said, no fan because it's a roadster. Uh, also, the alternator, um, old Fords like this have a regulator outside of the alternator, but I'm going to change it to like, uh, you know, the 1G or the 3G alternator, which has its own regulator. I'll show you that later on, but uh, for now, I think I'm going to do another hour of this because you can easily get just frustrated and burnt out from all of this rusty things this out guys interesting because this is the um, the vents and there's things inside of it I don't know it says bowling is in all right there there's a thick pencil and the other things in there and this is what is pretty cool I think when you're oh an old ladder I don't know how the pencil got in there but it's in there Okay, I don't know. I'll figure it out. The Bar Lumber Company. Uh huh. Don't know where that's uh, that's from. B A R R. Comment down below if you know where that's from. All right. For those of you that worked on cars before, can anyone tell me what this is? I honestly I'm asking a question because I don't know it looks like a vacuum line this is the brake um, pedal and is attached there somehow there was something connected to the firewall this is connected to the firewall and this end right here is connected to this like if you brake and then you let go of the brake, it goes back in. I have no idea what this is. I've never seen it.
All right, I think I'm gonna end it today. Uh, I think I put in about five hours worth of work. And um, the next step will be to probably empty the tank because there's uh, gas in there when I was moving it. Empty that out because I'm gonna use a plasma cutter to remove some of these panels that I'm going to use for the next, uh, the body over there, such as the striker, the floorboards, the um, tunnel right here. These are all still in good shape even though they're dirty and rusty. They're in good shape. I think I'm gonna tuck it in for today. I'm gonna remove this seat just to, in preparation for tomorrow. A um, Little bit at a time and before you know it, I think we'll be able to get this thing done. So, let's go. Okay, just real quick guys, here's what I did. I took off um, the e-brake housing the accelerator and the pedal and then of course the uh, housing for the brake pedal from the firewall all of those can be reused refurbished and reused and this right here is the wiring harness of course the uh, steering column I'm not sure if I'm going to reuse the wiring harness yet uh, but definitely the steering column, maybe change the steering wheel and of course underneath that is the brake booster and the power steering box. That should be all for this week. I'll see you again in the next few days when I get down here and start working. Maybe tomorrow, we don't know. But this is the other Bronco that I'm going to put together two of those into one uh, please keep track of it and if you're interested in helping out shoot me an email let me know or comment down on the comment section below i appreciate it that's all i have aloha